Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday, April 7th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Hope everyone's well and safe and uh, enjoying such a beautiful week and beautiful weather out there. Uh, as always, we start off our meetings with general public comment. I see one uh, person joining us whose name is not familiar to me, uh, Jana or Jana. I don't know if you're here to comment. Uh, if so, feel free at this point. If not, we will move on. Hi, I'm happy to just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jana White. I'm a member of the planning board and um, I may be taking over uh, for Alan Verson. Um, so I'm not available for until the fall, but wanted to just sort of be an observer today to get a sense of the work that all of you are doing. So um, that's why I'm here and, and nice to meet all of you. Great, thank you, Jana, for joining us. Is it Jana or Jana? Jana, like Anna Jana. with a J, yeah. Anna with a J, yep. great. Well, thank you for joining us and we hope we are we are on our best behavior this evening so that you will really join us in the, in the, in the fall. Um, moving right along, we have minutes of February 27th that Sarah sent us, I believe this afternoon for approval. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Linda. A second? Second. Uh, comments? Uh, just one tiny, one tiny thing. The bottom has got a date of 2020, and it's a, at the very bottom. I will. I missed the footer sometimes. 2020. OK, got it. Thank, Thank you. you, Linda. Martha? And just uh, a couple things. Um, Sarah, under the discussion of the small grant application, um, the first paragraph, or maybe the second, I guess, um, when you're talking about how the collections must be organized in order to inventory them, I, yes. the, the sentence didn't make sense to me, and it may be just because I've had a long day. Um, oh, it's very long. It's a run-on sentence. I'll fix it. <laughs> okay. And then the the paragraph that starts, Martha asked about the roof leak. There's just an extra D in there at the end of that uh, first line included in. You see that? Oh, yes. Not in. in. OK. Great. That was it. Sure. Thank you, Martha. Any other comments? OK, so all in favor of, we have to roll call on this. Sarah, forgive me for always asking. We do, unfortunately. OK, right. so Ryan? Sarah, yes. Linda? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jack? Yes. Dan? Yes. And Chris? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, thank you for always <clears throat> doing such a good job of the minutes, sir. So I have a few things in the chair's report tonight. First and most important, uh, it is with great sadness that we bid adieu to Jack Finn, who is, uh, unless we meet again in the next month or something, is leaving us. Uh, how dare he? But uh, he's moving out of town, right, Jack, to yeah. where? South Hadley. Wow. Wow. Abandoning. That's, that's where us. I'm coming to you from tonight. Oh, really? Oh, well, congratulations on your move. Oh, I'm hello, Jeff. Every single one of you. We will miss you too. Uh, it's been six plus years that you've been on this board, which is uh, wonderful. Um, and representing the Conservation Commission and bring, bringing those issues to the forefront is, has been really important. Um, Jack, in your honor, we are, I don't know if you know this or not, but we are making a donation of $325 to the oh, Broadbrook Coalition. 350 actually. Oh, uh, there was gonna... a late donation, so nice. nice round number, 350 Excellent. Well, that is wonderful. That is a great, I have so much respect for that group of people and what they do out there. It's well, just it, fantastic. Well, I know you've been active in promoting uh, expansion of Fitzgerald Lake Conservation ever for uh, the property forever. So thank you for that. One of my uh, fond memories of Jack is not just what you bring to the meetings, 
but a few times what you brought after the meeting, which was a yo-yo extravaganza. Some of you may remember that Jack is a internationally celebrity when it comes to yo-yos and uh, wowing us with his yo-yo magic is something that we won't get from anybody else ever again, most, most likely. So thank you, Jack, and uh, good luck at South Hadley. And maybe you can join that. Does South Hadley have a CPC? No, I don't know. I don't know. Well, they well, should have one if they don't. They should, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the hope is that we will be filling both of the slots that are now vacant, the uh, CONSCOM position as well as the planning board position uh, by the fall. Hopefully, uh, Jana won't be too scared off by us and will uh, we'll, uh, be with us. And then Sarah will work her magic and get someone from CONSCOM to also join us in the fall, hopefully. Uh, so a couple things that have been in the news lately. One is we were talking before the meeting about the church and it was nice to see Mark the quote in the paper two nights ago, was it? In the Gazette article uh, as representing the historic um, commission. So that's, it's an interesting and tangled issue what to do with the Holy Street Church there. And folks reading the paper or attending the meeting uh, will note that uh, Efforts are not, uh, at, at this point, construction is not moving forward to tear the building down. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. The other thing that was in the paper was um, the uh, $250,000 state housing choice grant that the city has received to um, do a whole bunch of work up at Hospital Hill, uh, 25 units of affordable housing. And we are mentioned both in the press release as well as the Gazette article as uh, contributing to that CPC contributing to that. So that was nice to nice to see that. Uh, those of you that have been downtown lately would notice the scaffolding up at Smith Charities. Um, and uh, so they're beginning that outdoor work, which is which is pretty cool. I, I know there was at one point a um, your CPC dollars at work sign but I think it may have blown away in the in that big windstorm of a number of days ago. So when I was there a couple of days ago, I did not see any CPC sign. Um, Sarah, I don't know if you could check up on that for yeah, us to make sure they have that. Um, last thing on my list is uh, a question to Sarah, which is what are we supposed to be doing next fall? Will we still be Zooming? Are we back to uh, meeting in central chambers. Do you have any idea? I have no idea at this point. Um, the, the governor's emergency declaration that allowed the remote meetings is still in place. Um, and I don't know what either the, the state or the city will be doing in the meantime. So no answers for you, unfortunately. So we just will wait and see about that. Um, great. Well, that'll be, it'll be interesting. And the hopes will be, or my hope will be at some point, we'll be able to actually see each other face to face rather than Zoom. But there is something nice to go into a meeting and not having to wear anything but shorts and no shoes. But uh, okay, moving right along tonight, we're mainly focused on our funding recommendations for our six projects for the spring of 2021. Uh, remember, we already funded one. Uh, mini small grant for historic North Hampton of $3,000. Uh, we have six projects before us tonight, totaling $335,750. Uh, funds available are $521,000 and a few more dollars. So we are again in a unique position, it's not unique anymore, of the second cycle in a row of having enough money to fully fund all six of those projects if we so choose. Sarah came up with some of the um, contract uh, conditions that we can we will look at after we decide to or not to fund. Um, and uh, fist bump to Chris for coming up with a really nice um, undesignated funding proposal. Thank you, Chris. That was that was well done. Uh, and his second version came in this afternoon. So hopefully, folks got that updated version. And I thought we would put that in discussion when we move into the 
um, undesignated uh, housing proposal. Since my understanding, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, is that this is not just something for the future, but something to attach to the proposal right now. Yep, that sounds great. Thank you. So, so we'll we'll put that off until we get to get to that project. Uh, so what we've done in the past and seems like it's worked. So why not do it again? Is to go through each project in the with the shopping cart in mind where we'll take an initial vote to put it into the shopping cart at whatever level of funding or not that we see fit. And then at the end of discussing all six proposals, we'll go back and check out with them. Uh, so if that's okay, we'll just follow that. Uh, Linda? I may be the only one who feels this, but I don't, unlike other rounds when we had insufficient money um, and I had some real questions about some of the projects. We have sufficient money and I personally don't have any significant reservations about any of them. So before we go through the whole shopping cart, um, I wonder if we could just see if anybody has serious reservations about the amount or, uh, or, the, or our grant in total um, and maybe save ourselves some time if nobody does. If they do, then by all means, let's let's go through each one. So you are suggesting a sort of a almost an expedited look at these in terms of lumping them all together right at the moment and self checkout, self checkout. So instead of you know putting them in a cart and going to the checkout, let's do the self checkout lane. Let's deal with each one once. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So going through a uh, proceeding immediately to checkout rather than putting them in the shopping cart. Yeah, since we really don't have to balance one against another, there's enough for all of them. Okay. Are people good with that? Yes? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Oh, Brian, you got muted somehow. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, in no particular order, well, in an order, I thought we'd go from uh, most expensive to least expensive, just as a way to, to, uh, to start that. So the first project is uh, Broughton's, how, how do you say that word, Broughton? Is that it? Um, I think it's Broughton, but. Broughton, Broughton's Meadow, the um, Habitat for Humanity small home cluster. Is there a, uh, will someone make a motion on that? Yeah, move to fund it at, at its full 120. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion? We may move through these pretty quickly tonight, huh? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's just such a, such a difference when we have money to spend. Uh, are we good to vote? Yeah, I think so. They, I mean, they've been before us a number of times. They've come through every time. We know they can do it. They've, it's a good thing. Uh, I had one question for Sarah, if she's still there. Is, yeah, I'm, I keep getting, sorry, Brian, I just keep getting a, a low bandwidth notice. So I'm trying to save getting kicked off. By uh, no, we don't want you kicked off. Um, the $250,000 grant that came in uh, I was looking at the press release and the Gazette article, and it sounds like some of that work will be again by um, Habitat for Humanity. These aren't though; these are separate projects from what we're funding. Is that correct? Uh, the the Housing Choice Grant. Yes. Yes. So the Housing <laughs> Choice Grant is uh, specifically for those former state hospital properties at the moment. Okay. A chapel and. Chapel and Bird's Pet, right, Sarah? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And and so three, so there will, do we look forward to seeing Habitat for Humanity come back to us with three additional units that they're looking at, do you think? Uh, we, we may, I think it depends on their funding sources and their timing. Um, I know they, they asked for everything that they felt they needed at this point, uh, but I, I don't know what their timing is for the other units moving forward. Great, thank you. Any other discussion on the small home cluster? 
Okay, we are checking out here. We are not in the shopping cart. So, uh, Sarah, take us through. Uh, a roll Brian? Call. Yes. Linda? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jack? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So just a quick aside to, to uh, Jana. Jana, usually we are faced with uh, very difficult decisions in this committee where we have, have all sorts of projects and not enough money to fund. So what you're witnessing tonight is really pretty unusual for us, um, where we have enough money, where we, again, we've heard, we've read proposals, we've heard from the grantees, we've heard public comments. So uh, it often does not happen like this. So just, just for you to know. Okay, the next next up is the Northampton Historic Preservation Plan. Is there a motion for that? Move to fully fund the Historic Preservation Plan. Is there a second? Second it. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Are we ready to vote? Yes, we are. Sarah? Brian? Yes. Linda? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jack? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Uh, yes. And Jeff? Yes. Okay, unanimous again, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Uh, moving right along to the Mill River Greenway Beach acquisition. Uh, is there a motion for that? I, I move that we fully fund the Mill River Greenway acquisition. Thank you, Jack. A second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Discussion? Martha? Uh, no, I'm in support of this acquisition. Um, I, I think I still need a little bit of twisting of my arms to make me understand how the problems that occurred last summer are going to be managed long-term. Um, parking, littering, people not obeying signs. Um, and I know that, and I asked this question before, I, I think Wayne answered it you know, as, as accurately as he could. I, um, if anyone could just weigh in on that, that would help me make a decision. Well, Martha, have you have you been following the community meetings that have been going on up in Leeds and in Florence? I have. not So there have been a uh, Rachel Maori, who's our our um, <clears throat> city councilor, has been gathering people, and we're working. Wayne runs a lot of these meetings to try to coordinate some plans for the upcoming summer months. And, and it's actually that group of people who are really most concerned that, with, that this purchase of this land happen so that the land comes back into someone's control because yeah. it's, you know, it's no man's land right now. But, yeah. but there is some effort. And then you know, there's obviously the long-term planning going on at the same time. But there's an effort. There are community meetings happening. Exactly. I remember that you had asked for that when we were asked to fund the long-term plan, that, that plan. And they are happening. And, and people up here in Florence and Leeds are going. I don't know what's going on in terms of the uh, Connecticut River Greenway areas, though. The, yeah. uh, we, they have a strong, pretty strong commitment from the lead civic organization to take this on. And they, they have experience doing this with the Beaver, Beaverbrook Conservation Area, which they've done a lot of work on. So I tend to believe them when they say they're on board with this and they're gonna be a good partner for the city of Northampton. In the this. conservation restriction for the property will include an affirmative responsibility for lead civic moving forward to clean up trash during the, the busiest period between Memorial Day and Labor Day um, and, and organize volunteers to do some work on the property. And it, it's also just having someone own it, um, it will help 
to alleviate some of those conditions by being able to close the property if necessary. That's something that the Conservation Commission reserves the right to do. Uh, and, uh, and also just go on it and take care of it. Like right now we can close the rest of the greenway, but this property, like Jack noted, is sort of a, a no man's land where no one can do anything. It's kind of the so wild, it, wild west. I went walking I mean, again the other, the other yeah. week. Yeah, you can tell and, the yeah. difference between what's managed and what's yeah. not. Yeah, I mean, it will still be a challenge that those issues won't go away, but it, it city ownership of the property will, will at least help to, to be able to deal with it in some manner. Uh, is, yeah. is, is it the LEED Civic Association that will be holding the conservation restriction? Yes. I, and I'll just say, I really support this. I, this is such a, a crucial teeny piece of land for all of the things that are going on on that end of the bike trail. Other <clears throat> discussion? Thank you, everybody. Martha, is that helpful? It is helpful. Thank you. Okay. Other discussion about this? We're ready to vote. Okay. Brian? Uh, yes. Linda? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jack? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. All right. Unanimous. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, next up is the affordable housing fund. Is there a motion for that? Move to fully fund. Thank you, Chris. Second? Second. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Chris, do you want to take us through this uh, proposal that you came up with? Sure. Thanks, Brian. Um, so hopefully you've all had a chance to take a look at it. Um, the genesis of this for me is that uh, one of our, I feel one of our um, important component functions is, uh, you know, fiscal oversight. And uh, when we, um, when we entertain a proposal from, you know, a group, uh, one of the things that we ask them for is a, is a budget. And we look at it pretty closely and we ask questions about it's, you know, how realistic it is, et cetera. Uh, uh, we, we've now, um, on a couple of occasions and in two different areas in which we fund, been asked to uh, put, put, put together seed money for, for potential programs, um, which, you know, we have found to be worthwhile uh, upon, upon further review. But, but we go into it uh, by the nature of, of, of the request, not knowing exactly what it is we're funding. Um, I have a legacy of, of dealing with these kinds of things and, and they have always made me uneasy, uh, despite the fact that I do believe we're acting, uh, we're working with people of good faith. Uh, but I do think that it's, I do think that it's appropriate that we um, achieve some level of accountability along the lines of what we expect from groups when they come to us uh, with a standard proposal. So what I've put together and hopefully the language that, that I've, 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 I've drafted uh, with a lot of help, thank you from Sarah, uh, does this is to um, ask entities that receive, and it's mainly it's mainly the planning office, but ask entities that receive, you know, uh, what I've what I've come up with the phrase undesignated funding from the CPC to follow up with uh, uh, what I consider to be a, really a minimal uh, level of reporting that will give us an idea of how the funds were were allocated. Uh, and also, um, if, it's, if it's seed money for programs that we're then asked to you know, fund through the regular grant proposal, to acknowledge that that's already occurred and, and to include that in their accounting so that we know that we've already, A, we've already been there and B, what the, what the actual total amount of the program has been. So that's what my attempt to do here is, and, and, and hopefully the language that I put together um, uh, achieve that and if anybody has any questions I'd, I'd be more than happy to do it and and what I would like to see moving forward is not only to apply the language to this particular um, proposal but also to any of these uh, 
proposals that we get in the future in, in any funding area. Um, uh, so, so we don't, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel and that uh, um, entities that are coming to us with this kind of proposal will, will know in advance that uh, this is, this is our expectation of them. Uh, Sarah has suggested that we include this in the administrative section of the CPA plan, uh, which she's currently working on a redraft. I had actually thought about whether that was an appropriate way to do it. So I'm, I'm glad she suggested it because I do, I do think that it belongs there and it will sort of uh, provide the clarity uh, moving forward that, uh, that I was hoping to achieve. So uh, with that, if there's anybody who has any questions, I'd be more than happy to try and try and explain it. Thanks. Linda? Um, I was under the impression, and perhaps that's, I was wrong, that this information gets provided to Sarah um, uh, both piecemeal as, as funding um, drawdowns are, are requested and then as a final report. So is this really to make it more accessible to us? I, mean, I feel like we've gotten the information um, every, like for the Conservation Commission or whatever, that, that that's all, it's all been available uh, upon request or Wayne has included it in his presentation. But this to me sort of formalizes it getting before our eyes. Is that really what this is doing? Yeah, I think, I, I mean, um, I, I think you're right in that uh, by and large, you know, the information is accessible if we ask for it. Um, I don't, I just, I think it, it should be, uh, I think it should be, we shouldn't have to ask. I think that, um, as I said earlier, um, I don't consider it an unreasonable standard of scrutiny and, and it's along the lines of any program uh, that, that, uh, that comes before us with a, any, any group that comes before us with a grant request. Um, the, the difference is, is that, uh, you know, rather than receiving the information on an ad hoc uh, basis, uh, there's a formal mechanism for it and, and an expectation um, an expectation that uh, you know we'll see the numbers uh, even if we don't ask just just as part of our due diligence. Okay. Um, I just wanted to clarify that was it really is not a significant change. It's, it's an it's an, an improvement, but it's not a significant deviation or addition of, of responsibilities on a on a grantee. I hope not, and that's and that's not my intent. And as I was thinking about what what types of things we ought to ask for, it came to my I came to the conclusion that we're not asking for numbers that they shouldn't already know. Um, for instance, they you know I, so what I'm really asking for them is to put them together in a meaningful manner and send them along to us since it is money that we approved at their request. And then I had one other question, and I'm I'm fine with that. I think. Yeah. It's, it's, having that information in front of us at the time we're considering an application, it, it'll be helpful. Um, so it'll be automatic now and that, that's fine. Um, I'm getting an echo, so I'm sorry if that's coming from me. I did wonder about the third bullet point about the interim report, um, which to me is saying if you if if we fund you in this round and by the next round you haven't spent it all, even if you're not asking for new funds, you have to give us an interim report, which to me is giving them a much smaller window to perform. And I just I just wondered why you felt that was necessary. Sorry, I'm unmuting. I think the answer for that is, um, uh, although it hasn't happened this way, the, there's the potential that uh, it could go one of these one of these pots of money, depending on how large it is and what the demands are. Uh, it could it could go it could be tapped over a period of, of several rounds or even several years. And yeah. uh, with that in mind, I just just so I you know just so we can keep track of where we are in the process um, as they move forward, um, I, you know I. Again, I, I'm not, I'm not attempting to create a more onerous system, um, and uh, but, but I go back to this idea that these are numbers that they, they're going to have, 
um, as mm -hmm. they allocate money for, you know, soft money for, uh, I don't know, a title search or something like that, they're going to write down somewhere that that's what they've done. Um, and, you know, just so I can keep track of where we are as we work our way through a, a $50,000 grant or a $40,000 grant, it, it'd be nice to have that information on hand and, 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 and ready, readily available. And just part, just, just, I guess what I'm trying to do is it, make it a, a normal part of the process so that mm -hmm. uh, uh, a standardization of, of, of delivery of information so that as we go forward, it's just, it's just gonna happen and it's gonna be there and it's gonna be part of our consideration and our deliberations and will be updated. Um, because the truth of the matter is, you know, um, I don't always remember what it is we did the last round unless I'm paying close attention to it. And uh, I do go back and look at things, uh, but it'd be nice um, uh, to have the people who, who, who spend the money uh, keep us abreast of, of where they are in the process. Julia? So when I read through, the, Chris, I like it. Oh, am I echoing now? Okay. When I read through this, Chris, I like it. And what I like is that it enters it into the public record, goes into the minutes, and therefore it's also accessible to the public who's interested in how we're spending the money. But, but I will say that I read bullet point one, which says, tell us everything when you've expended it. And then bullet point three, which says, and by the way, tell us if you haven't finished expending it as well. And so then I combined the two and I said, just give us a report after we've given you the funds every single time we convene. So we convene in the fall, we convene in the spring. We should be getting reports from those groups who we've provided fund money to. If it's fully expended, we'll find that out. If it's partially expended, we'll find that out. You know, it's, it's, we want to report every time. I'm good with that. Um, I think I think part of that is so basically what you're saying is wherever you are in the process, just keep us updated and 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 strike clause one. I think probably the reason it, it is the way it is is um, I wrote it as I thought about it. So my first thing was I want to know what it is. Oh, by the way, what about if they haven't filled, you know, finished spending it? Well, then let's do something on an interim basis. But but you're right. That would certainly achieve the same end. And, and I'm more than happy to make, you know, support that 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 change. It's really just if we're giving money to what yeah. did you call it again? A, a, a fund? I call it undesignated yeah. funds. We 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 sort of kicked around what we were going to do, but I, I that was the best I could come up with. And I like it because we don't know if another fund will come in the future. Right. But any undesignated fund, once they get money, they have to report back to CPC in every uh, one of our cycles until it's all spent. Uh, Again, I'm 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 happy with that. Um, I, my only concern would be whether, actually, no, I'm happy with that. Thank you. <laughs> Other comments? Just to be clear, is the committee looking for a report during a meeting or something in writing, or what should we be requesting from after? Uh, I think I, I, you know, I'm I'm flexible on that. I think the I think in writing would be fine. Uh, but as a practical matter, you know, Wayne's here all the time. And so if he's talking about, um, uh, you know, a, a new increment of 50,000, it'd be nice to have him talk about uh, how the last 50,000 was spent. Um, but uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not strongly in favor of either. Uh, so if anybody else has input, I think, I think written is clearly uh, the, 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 the way to go, if only because we may not we may not see the grantees at, during every cycle, and a written submission would be fine. I'm not going to make them. I'm not going to make them uh, schlep up to to uh, uh, to the meeting room once we get back to normal, just just so they can read numbers off a piece of paper. Other comments. Uh, I like the uh, the term is of the title that it says discretionary fund grant reporting requirements. I think a discretionary fund is more descriptive and more accurate to these kinds of proposals. Um, and I, I like that term better. And there's a conservation discretionary fund and there's a historic discretionary fund and there's a housing discretionary fund. So I prefer that term. I like that too, Jack. Chris, would you be okay with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
you know, Sarah and I sort of kicked it back and forth. Um, whatever people are comfortable with is fine. I, all I was trying to get at was the idea that uh, to, to sort of just um, uh, to, well, I'm missing the word, but just to uh, just to show that it, it's it's not what we normally do, uh, and that 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 what we're doing is providing flexibility in in how the in how the funds are spent. So either way is 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 fine with me. I'm I'm yeah I'm comfortable with both. Uh, Jeff, I kind of like it incorporated into um, a written form on the um, at the beginning of each cycle in the fall. <clears throat> we get um, a report on how much each fund has in it. What are, what are the loans? Uh, what's the progress of the loans that we've made that we've leveraged? Um, how, what's the timeline to pay them off? Um, I think it'd be interesting to follow some of these um, funds to see how long does it actually take for um, an affordable housing fund to exhaust itself. Um, and I would also point out that um, <laughs> it really is the case that, that I think eventually the cycle will return to what we've been accustomed to and we will not have sufficient funds to fund every single uh, proposal that comes before us. And um, to have that situation and then a discretionary fund proposal would, would uh, the more information we have, the better. Um, to decide what what we may or may not want to do going forward. So good idea. And just so everyone's aware, if at any point anyone wants a reporting of any particular grant, we know exactly how much funds are available in, in every account. It's not like we, we turn the funds over to an applicant once an award is made. The city retains control of those funds and we, we only pay invoices on a, on a invoice by invoice basis once work is done. So we, we always know how much is available and exactly where it's going. Other folks want to weigh in? Uh, Sarah, we have two uh, discretionary funds, undesignated funds, whatever we're calling them. And that's the conservation fund and the affordable housing fund. Do, do we have anything, anything else? We don't have a historic um, preservation one, do we? We do not. Uh, we used to have a fund for potential historic preservation restrictions to try and encourage private property owners to place restrictions on their property. It wasn't very successful. Uh, we, we weren't um, able to find any uh, private owners who were willing to do that. So that money was returned to the CPA funds. Um, but those two are the only ones we have at the moment. And I might could butt in here. Um, as I was thinking about this, it was difficult for me to envision um, a fund other than the two that are already there. But I, I, I worked the language to accommodate the possibility that my imagination is not as good as other people's, um, and and that that this would apply to anybody's whose whose proposed funding fit this sort of general criteria. Uh, Linda, were you going to say something? No. Yeah. So if we were to keep the first bullet, I suppose one way to tweak that would be to say an itemized account accounting in writing of all expenditures made on the grant will be submitted to CPC at the beginning of each cycle. Is that helpful, Chris? Yeah. So I, I tried to combine the two. Uh, so it would say grantee shall provide an itemized accounting of all expenditures made under the grant uh, once each funding round and again when all funds are expended. And, and then the, the language about what that report shall include is the same. So they're both combined into that one, if that makes sense. Nice. Yeah. Great. Sounds great. Sounds great. Thank you. Other discussion on this? So <clears throat> again, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, there are two ways this is incredibly useful. One is for the specific project tonight, which is a affordable housing fund and folding these in as uh, conditions for that specific proposal. And two is incorporating this into the rewrite of the, of the uh, CPC plan. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, as I said, uh, 
that was that was something that Sarah suggested as, as she and I were going back and forth and I had thought about it I just wasn't sure it was appropriate but but uh, I, you know given given the fact that she's 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 on board I, I, I would love to see it included in that as we do the rewrite. Great. Good. Um, so this will not come as Sarah as an uh, as part of the the uh, the orders that you prepared for us but rather as the more lengthy conditions that are sent out to the applicants or rather to the uh, grantees. Is that correct? Yeah, so, so I, I was thinking this would be included in the contract for these types of funds. This would be far too specific for anything that would be included in the council order. Great, good. So uh, again, this, the, the affordable housing uh, fund is the proposal that we're looking at. Uh, and now we would vote on up and down with it. Uh, and as part of that vote would be putting the conditions that Chris has uh, worked so hard, you know, such a wonderful way uh, as, as a requirement for this proposal. Uh, are we, uh, other discussion on the affordable housing fund? And again, the proposal is, or the um, motion is to fully fund at 50,000. Any other discussion on this? Uh, we're ready to vote. Okay, Sarah. Ryan? Yes. Linda. Yes. Julia. Yep. Yes. Martha. Yes. Jack. Yes. Dan. Yes. Chris. Yes. And Jeff. Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Chris, again. Um, Thanks, Jack, everybody, for your help. Appreciate it. Jack gets, Jack gets the two fist bumps award for his work, but Chris gets the one fist bump award for, <laughs> for his work. Uh, moving right along, looking at the Shepherd Barn project and the Damon House balustrade for historic Northampton, is there a motion for that? Move to fully fund. Thank you, Linda. Second, Second from Julia. Uh, discussion? Are we ready to vote? Yes, okay. Sarah, take us through. All right, Brian? Yes. Linda? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jack? Yes. Uh, uh oh, Sarah, are you still there? Have we lost Sarah? I'm having some of the same problems, so. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, all right, I, I am back. Uh, so I, uh, I think I left it off with Jack. So Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. All right, Great. unanimous. Thank you, Sarah. Don't leave us again. Um, I'll try it, not to. It should, it should be noted that the project with uh, one of the least amount funding is the project that uh, has about 5 million pages more than anybody else. So that's historic Northampton for you. Last but not least is the uh, Lily Library or Scary Under the Stairs project. Uh, is there a motion on the floor for that? I moved. For full funding, I assume, Martha? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, for $14,500. Uh, second from Julia. Yeah. Uh, discussion for this? Get it done soon. <laughs> Anything else? All set to vote? Okay, Sarah. Right, Brian? 
Yes. Linda? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Uh, Jack? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you, Sarah. Isn't it nice to spend money? <laughs> wow. Uh, that was that was the easiest round I think we've ever had. I do believe you're correct. It's certainly been a smooth one and certainly six strong proposals. Okay, so next on the agenda is to go through the council orders that uh, Sarah has presented uh, to us. Uh, so let's, do we have to vote on each of these two? Sarah, it's so cumbersome to do the roll call. No, you don't. You, you can wait and do them all in a, in a We go, go through as a package? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so I know when I was going through them, I noticed just a few um, uh, punctuation stuff and all. So let's. No matter just... how many times I read them, I always know. sneaky semicolon. I know, no, no, yeah. Um, so let's let's go through them one one by one. Uh, maybe we could start with the. Uh, let's see. I have in front of me the historic preservation plan. So people can pull that one up first. I right, just a couple of things. Uh, one, Sarah, the second whereas, these are just a very small, through should be a, a small T, not a capital T, correct? Uh, yep, got it. And under the now therefore it be ordered, it's not the affordable housing fund, it's the historic preservation plan. Nice. Thank so you. that snuck in there. And a period at the end of the specifically the last now therefore now therefore be it ordered. Period at the end. Anybody else have comments or questions about this? Okay, moving right along, yes. All right. Uh, the second one that I have in front of me is the uh, affordable housing fund. And again, I got a period at the very end of the last, now there, the, the very end of the document. Okay, all set. Anything else on this one? Uh, Linda? Um, I wondered whether this shot a be coming out of the housing reserve. It looks like it's coming out of the general reserve. There is no more money in any of the reserves except for the historic reserve. Really, not even in the housing reserve? No. Nope. So that was taken up last round with, oh no, you're right. What am I doing? There was, I thought we'd gone over that yes. and it was. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Um, it's the yes. open the I'll open switch, space. I'll switch that over. The open space was gone. Affordable housing had a bunch of money in it. Yeah, it has one hundred thirty thousand four seventy five. Yeah. So I I'll make I'll I'll go through and and clear that out and then take the remainder right. from the, the budgeting. Good catch, Linda. Thanks. Linda. Uh, anybody else? Any other discussion on this one? Good to go. Okay, the uh, Lilly Library one. Um, so we do have that one coming in from the Historic Preservation Reserve, correct? Sarah? All of that you have coming out of the Historic Preservation Reserve. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll do the same thing with those. I was looking at the wrong lines in my budget report. So there, there was 41,641 left in the historic reserve. Well, you have it coming out of that historic preservation reserve. So I'm just making sure that, that that was correct. Yes, that is correct. Okay. 
um, I would take the comma out of out of the first whereas Lily Library, no comma submitted a CPA application. Okay, yeah. So the five thousand eight ninety one from this one was the remainder after the the rest of it was tapped out from another account this round. Uh, can you say that again, Sarah? I don't understand uh, so that. The, uh, so this re remaining 5,891 that's coming from the Historic Preservation Reserve, it will set it down to zero. I think that's another. And there should be project. one other project. That I think that's a different that draws project. from the. The Lily Library. Yes, so the entirety of this one is coming from the Historic Preservation Reserve. And then pieces of that other uh, of the reserve will also be drawn down for the, the two other historic preservation projects. Okay. So the, the so all the reserves will be zero at the end of the got it. This. So the historic Northampton one is the one where the, the rest will come out of the reserve and okay, got it. So good good to go on Lily Library. Martha? Um, just that it is appropriating the funding to historic Northampton at the bottom. It should say Lily Library. Mm. Thank you, Martha. Got that, Sarah? Got it. Thank you. Anything else on this one? Many eyes is helpful on these. Um, the uh, Habitat for Humanity. The the font is all was all kind of weird on this. I don't know, Sarah, if you want to change it. So it, yeah, the, it there's down. something there's something quirky in the the template of this. When the council clerk gets them, she changes the font anyway. Right. Um. I had, again, very nitpicky, the fourth whereas, whereas the homes, H-O-M-E-S. Home, yeah. -E and period at the, the end. Period at the That's end, awesome. yeah. And so this is all coming out of general funds, nothing from affordable housing, correct? This will, I'll, I'll switch this one over to the affordable housing reserve. Okay. So, some of it, I don't think all of it can come out of the affordable housing reserve. Most of it will. Yeah. So there was 134.75 in the reserve at the beginning of the round. So these two projects total. Yeah, so they total 170. So what, whatever is over and above the 134.75 will still come from the general fund. Other discussion on this? Linda? Uh, I just wondered whether it was worth making note in the whereas about their, their efforts to um, make these housings sustainable in, in terms of energy because that really has been a, a big focus of theirs. That enhances affordability as well as helping save uh, the world for all of us. So in the first whereas it mentions uh, three energy efficient affordable homes. We could certainly be more specific if we wanted to. Nah, that's probably good enough. I'm, I actually didn't notice that, thanks. Martha? Uh, again, under the whereas about the restriction, restrictions to individuals and families, um, should that not say permanently restricted? Sure. Yep, got it. Other discussion? Good to go on this. Okay, All right, a couple more, I think. 
um, the uh, Mill River Greenway or the Mill River and Leeds, whatever we're calling that. Comments about this? Martha? Um, on the second whereas restriction is repeated, the word. And, and a semicolon too. Under the, and under the third one, I'm not sure about including heritage landscapes in this. I don't quite get that. Um, no, I, I, I don't get that we're we are preserving it or protecting a heritage landscape. I don't think that was ever really explained in the application. No, oh, deleted. So I'm just sort of wondering about calling it an area for water-based recreation. I'm, I'm, I'm not, with a plan in, in the works, on how we're gonna actually be providing water-based recreation in Northampton. I'm not convinced that we wanna put it here. I feel okay with you know, open space and, and the word recreation because it is next to the trail. I'm a little leery about throwing people in the water. Uh, I only mentioned that just to be clear that it, it is an area that is alongside the Mill River and people will be swimming and wading and fishing and, mm. and all of those things that people will do. But it, I'm certainly open to different types of wording. Could you, but, um, say, could you say opening. provide for the possibility of water-based recreation? Or opening it to public access. Yeah, I, I just, I would prefer that. I know it, we're having conversations about water-based recreation at Parks and Rec, and I'm not sure that this is gonna be the spot of, of, of the basis of water. Okay, do, so do we think that listing the, the Mill River in the first whereas is sufficient and just eliminate the provide for water-based recreation in, in the third one? Well, one thing would be to just to get rid of water-based, provide for recreation. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was getting at. Like just get water-based, keep it as a recreational space. It is a recreational space. We're just not saying get in the water. Sarah, are you good with that? Yes? So I, um, so for, so just have a provide recreational opportunity. Perfect. Okay. In the first whereas, uh, I would just take out the and when it says uh, to acquire a 3.3 acre parcel along the Mill River in Leeds, abutting the existing Mill River Greenway. Just get rid of the and there. All right, all that. Uh, and this is all, just to check, this is all coming out of the reserve, not open space, correct? Correct. Good to go on this. Any other comments? Okay, last but not least is Historic Northampton. Comments? Uh, in the third, whereas we hold, we the city hold a permanent preservation restriction. Correct. Any other questions, comments on this? Good to go. Okay. I just have uh, one um, uh, under the same, whereas. Uh, yes. Um, I think it might be. Uh, important to add in here um, that the funds will um, expand Historic Northampton's opportunities to provide proper programming. Okay, 
Okay, so I'll just add that at the end of the second whereas, I think, in exactly mm -hmm. yep. the language you just said. You want to read that back to us, Sarah? And that will be, whereas all work will be consistent with the Secretary of the Interior Standards for the Treatment of Historic Properties and will expand Historic Northampton's public programming opportunity. Martha, that's good for you? Um, sure. I mean, I think it belongs really in the third whereas, but either one is fine. Okay, I can move it. No problem. So you moving, decide, Sarah. <laughs> moving uh, it to the third. Yeah, that I, that does read a little nicer. So it's whereas CPA funds will be used to help secure an important historic resource that is valued by the community in the region on which the city holds a permanent preservation restriction and will expand historic Northampton's public programming opportunity. Great, thank you. And you are tweaking where that money is coming from, is that correct? Uh, no, so that, that's still coming from the preservation. It's all coming out, okay, great. So that is it. Um, do we need to vote on this, Sarah, as a package? Yes. All six of them, okay. Take us through, please. Uh, somebody has to move it. Oh, first. So make a motion to approve the orders. Thank you, Chris. Second from Julia. Okay. All right. Brian? Yes. Linda? Yes. Julia? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jack? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. Okay, unanimous, thank you. All right. We just spent 335,000, wow. Are people following the uh, Jones Library in uh, Amherst? That the, whatever it is, town council just approved that. Boy, what is that, a $15 million project for them? I think there'll be a lot of CPA funding coming out for, for them. Um, all right, moving right along as we always do at the end of each round, we do a little debriefing, uh, what worked, what didn't work, what we could do differently for the next round. Uh, anybody wanna talk about this? Comments, suggestions, way to do things a little bit better? Nothing? It seems to always work to have lots of money. <laughs> there you go. Julia's suggestion is lots of money. Good one. Do you know of anything on the horizon, Sarah? I mean, I'm thinking we may get swamped in the fall uh, when things supposedly get back to normal or not. Uh, there, there may be some open space acquisitions depending on timing. They're always sort of hurry up and wait situations for Wayne. So if, if people get back to him about offers he's made that there could potentially be something there. Otherwise, not really. I haven't really heard anything. Okay. Uh, we, the city has had a large increase in the amount of community development block grant funds available. So that I think that has really helped to absorb some of the impact that other communities are seeing with CPA funds. <clears throat> I think one, one thing we can always entertain is to reopen the discussion of whether to bring down our debt by, or retiring our debt, whatever it's called. So that's something we can talk about in the fall if we're flush with money and proposals are, are not coming in. Uh, other funding round debriefing on this? Good to go? I'd just like to say that it's been wonderful working with each and every one of you. And the city of Northampton is uh, really blessed to have a, a group of dedicated people like you looking over the, the grants. So uh, I've learned a lot from each and every one of you. So it's such a pleasure working with you guys. Well, thank you. Again, miss Jack. you Jack. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. 
I'm really sorry to see you go. Yeah, really sorry. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Likewise, yeah. <clears throat> um, do good work in South Hadley. They certainly need it, as all, <laughs> as all towns do. Uh, all right, moving right along. Summer schedule and CPA plan. Sarah? So for the summer schedule, I, I don't think we need to meet unless there are any expedited applications that come in. And my plan for the, um, the update of the plan was to put together the edits that I had. Um, and nothing really substantial except to include edits that were made to the open space and recreation plan. And then also a little bit more substantially the, uh, the housing production um, plan and uh, assessment of fair housing needs and get that out to everyone. And then if, if you're on a committee that, that's charged with implementing a piece of that, like the Recreation Commission for Julia and the Historic Commission for Martha, although I, I know that will be um, delayed a little bit until we have a comprehensive historic preservation plan, you know, take that to your committee, get some input, see if it still makes sense. And then for everybody just to think about the administrative section and whether it makes sense or if there's things we could improve or, or do differently. So we'll try to power through revisions to this in the fall and devote at least part of one meeting, if not more to it. Yeah, I, I was thinking of having it available before the, the funding round begins. I mean, applicants will, if they're planning to apply for funds, we'll be looking at the plan that we have now, um, but you know, it's, a, it's a pretty solid plan with a lot of, um, priorities included um, that's already been done with a lot of city input. So I, I don't think we really need to do a, a giant substantial revision, but just make sure that it, it's still up to date and still makes sense. Great, thank you, Sarah. The, the only other thought that occurred to me was given some of the uh, issues that Chris has brought forth about um, getting the word out about CPC funding, if there's anything we could do in August, a month or so before proposals are due, uh, whether it would be a letter to the editor or a guest editorial in the Gazette or something on the website or just any other ideas to get the word out. Um, the folks have, you know, we've struggled with that exactly how to do that. Um, any suggestions on that for a summer activity? Or if people have it, just get getting it to Sarah and she could run with it, I'm sure. Yeah, and at least for, for my part, I've um, every round I've published a constant contact um, planning and sustainability newsletter update that includes great pictures of the things that we're doing and invites people to apply the next round. The Gazette hasn't picked it up um, and our press releases really haven't been successful in the past. So if anybody has any different ideas of things we could do to get the word out. Let me know and I'd be happy to do that. I do see other communities, Amherst in particular, I think, and but also Hadley get mentioned when they're um, CPCs fund projects and we tend not to. So I'm not quite sure what's up with the Gazette doing that, but. Yeah, I, and I don't know why that is. I mean, when, <laughs> uh, when there were more reporters, they would stop by the planning office and see what we had going on and they'd at least give us a call about press releases, but that, I, that really hasn't happened in the past and we haven't been successful. Uh, anything else for summer schedule or issues around that? Moving right along, other business not foreseen when agenda was published. Uh, Jana, any comments on our meeting tonight? Uh, thank you for asking. Um, none at this point. I mean, uh, I have questions for longer term, I guess. You know, my question at this point is just a broad one for all of you. Um, you know, what you see the planning board rep specifically contributing to your conversation so that as I'm thinking about um, you know, getting ready, uh, presumably to, to start serving in the fall. Um, what do you see as the person in my role? But what do you want me to contribute to the committee specifically? What does the planning board voice bring to your conversations? 
Anybody want to touch that one? Yeah, I'll take a run at that. Um, as somebody who comes to the, uh, the committee without a portfolio, um, what I look to for my colleagues who are here representing specific areas of the city's activities is um, a level of expertise in those areas that I don't have and insights into what's happening um, within those areas uh, that I may not be privy to either because I, the Gazette doesn't cover it or I just, my attention span is, is too short. Um, uh, I, I learn a lot from the people who, who, uh, who come here representing, um, you know, Jack representing conservation and, and uh, uh, recreation, Julia, just, just about what, they're, what it is that they're doing and where they are on certain issues. And, and um, it's always good for me to hear from people who who are 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 more steeped in the in the specific issues than than I am, uh, so that I can make a, a better informed decision. So I, I benefit a lot from from the people who who uh, um, who represent specific areas of, of the city's activities. Um, and I and I juxtapose that with my own, which is I don't feel tied or obligated to those things, and I and I tend to focus on where my strength lies, which is fiscal responsibility. So I think it's it's a good way to build. Um, bridges amongst the the sort of different components of what the what the CPC is being asked to do on behalf of on behalf of the community. Thank you, Chris. That was that was great. Anybody else want to respond to Janice? <clears throat> what the one comment I would make, Janice, is that um, each of us uh, has the opportunity to speak about issues that are not within our domain. So you come, or you would come to us via the planning board, but would, but would have an opportunity and perhaps an obligation to speak about conservation and housing and recreation and historic preservation, all those other issues that we deal with from a non-planning perspective as well. So just because you would represent the planning board does not mean that you refrain from your input or giving us input or making your voice heard on every other every other issue as well thank you <clears throat> thank you for considering uh well so folks um i think we will not see each other again unless as sarah said we get an expedited proposal that comes up until uh september correct sarah yes that is correct. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, maybe, maybe meet a little, maybe end of August, just to have one meeting to discuss the plan. Oh, great! And any outreach that the board, that the committee might want to do, or early September, because I'm not sure we've even met in September, have we? Have we? Uh, uh, yes, that's true. So early, you know, early September. Yeah. That would be great, Martha. Uh, I just want to thank you, Brian, and also Sarah. Uh, for shepherding us through this remote situation we have going on here. And Brian, also, I just uh, really commend you for making a home for us all here. It feels, um, it just feels like a very friendly, uh, congenial, warm place to be. And I, um, I know the boards aren't always like that. Um, I feel like everyone on the board is appreciated and we all have a voice. And I think that means a lot. And I just want to extend the appreciation and Jana, that's what you'll be coming to. Great. Thank you, Martha. Very well said, Martha. You're here, Martha. You're here. Uh, are we good to go? Have a wonderful summer, everyone. That's it. I mean, uh, oh, Sarah. And yeah. I would just add if, if anybody has any questions or, or wants anything um, between now and the next time we meet, you know, I'll, I'll be in touch with those sections of the plan. But if you have any specific questions about anything at all related to CPA or, or even beyond that, let me know and I'm, I'm happy to provide you with anything you need. And you'll let us know where we are to be meeting, whether it's Yes, I will, keep you, I will keep you updated as soon as I know. Great. Good. Thank you, everybody. Have a great summer. Great spring. Thanks, Brian. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Bye, Jack. Thank you. Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack.